this is the first piece in my cross stitch journey <laughs> and this is called fairy moon by mirabilia uh, this was a pattern from quite a while ago and this is the first mirabilia that i finished um i this is pretty much all of my pieces are stitched on 32 count linen so this is a 32 count amber colored linen i did not make any changes or conversions to this. It was my first time completing a piece. It was my first time beading a piece. Um, and yeah, it. I think this one took me maybe six months to do. And then um, I was about 17 when I stitched this. And then I, or my, my parents had it professionally framed for me. And so the white with the silver fillet and the dark, the dark frame. But anyway, having completed this piece, there was no way I could not to do any more mirabilia. So this was the first completed one and it's beautiful. Here's Cinderella. I stitched this piece uh, very early in college. I think it was 18 over the first year. And I remember when this piece came out that it was very popular and lots of people loved it. I think lots of people were stitching it. It is stitched on a 32 count kind of light bluish gray linen. And I loved that there was a castle in the background. So here's a close up of the castle. And I think it's the right amount of detail for the piece. It's got some cranic, it has some beads. And then I thought her hair was interesting the way it looks stripy up close, but from a distance, I think it looks really nice. And then the beading on the bodice was, was good. The flowers are also interesting that they are um, done with cranic accents in both the leaves and the flowers to sort of make them pop. And of course the barefoot at the bottom. And this also, like some of her other pieces, has a border all around it and then with the details at the corners. And again, framed with a really nice kind of distressed looking frame, a fillet and a an olive green sort of velveteen mat. This is the first mermaid that I ever stitched. It's called Waiting for Ships. And I liked the emotion of the piece. So this, I stitched this in college. This took me, I don't know, seven or eight months, I think. I like the detail in the tail, especially. Here is the second mermaid that I stitched. It's called The Queen Mermaid by Mirabilia. And it's a 32 count linen that's a very, very pale green. I think I loved this pattern because it seemed to capture a moment and I thought that the face was great. I liked the crown and the beading in the hair. I really liked the way the bodice was done and of course the treasures and the seaweed I think looked really nice. So this did not take me too too long my memory is I stitched this way back in college but I think this took me about six months to stitch and I got it professionally framed and you'll see some of my of course some of my mermaids are using this they have a kind of rope design around the frame used a silver fillet and a kind of velveteen mat and um, so yeah this is Queen Mermaid this is the third mermaid, or mermaids. It's called Mermaids of the Deep Blue. And I fell in love with this pattern, particularly because there were two mermaids. It was kind of upping my game a little bit. And so this one, I think, took me a little bit longer to stitch. I think this one may have taken me like nine months. I worked on this in college. I really love the way the hair is done and the beading. And I like that the two uh, figures are, their faces are 
or, and their whole bodies are faced in different orientations. So again, um, I chose a, for the frame a kind of distressed old world kind of look, a teal velveteen mat and a gold fillet, and of course this was stitched on a teal 32 count linen. So here is Angel of Healing, and this is a lavender and lace pattern. And this was actually the first time that I stitched on a hand dyed linen. It's still 32 count. Um, I think it might be from Silk Weaver, but, and again, this was back in college, I think towards the end of college. And what I loved about this actually was that I love the colors and I love that both sides of the dress, they're actually asymmetrical. Again, the designer um, gave the option to do a two over two face or a one over one. I of course chose the one over one and I think it's particularly nice. So anyway, here's some, a little bit more of a closer up. I can't really do medium distance the way the room is configured. <laughs> So I'm either far away or I'm really close, but I'll give you a close-up look. So here's another piece. This is called Angelica. Um, it's a lavender and lace pattern designed by Marilyn Levitt and Bloom. And what I loved about this piece is that it looks very pre-Raphaelite. And I love pre-Raphaelite pre artists like John William Waterhouse and Edward Byrne Jones. And this particularly reminds me of a, a, a Burn Jones face. What makes the face so nice, so striking, is that um, this is stitched again on 32 count linen, just natural, and the designer provided a regular two over two face or a one over one face. So I chose to stitch the one over one face and that's why there's such um, remarkable detail on the face. And, and then of course the drama of the roses is nice. So I'll show you a little bit closer. And then of course with the gold, I chose to have a gold fillet and a gold frame. And here is a close-up of the face. Sorry about the reflections and the shadows. Here is the last piece of this type that I did before I started my full coverage. And so this is called, I believe, Fairy Godmother. It's a lavender and lace pattern by Marilyn Levitt Emblem. And this, what I really loved about this, one, the color scheme is my color scheme. So blues, teal, purple, etc. And this too has, it's stitched on 32 count linen, two over two for the most part, but the face is one over one. And again, what I love is that the designer gave two faces, the sort of normal two over two, and then a one over one face. So um, I could choose which one I wanted to do. And this one has a bit of a background, which most of the patterns don't. It goes all the way down to the bottom. And then it just is beautiful. I mean, the details on the dress and the way that it's stitched to look like light is hitting it, I think is just amazing. Um, I think the cranic details in the dress are really nice. And the wings are pretty. And when I finished this piece in just <laughs> a few months, this and of course I you know I did a double kind of velvet mat in this pretty frame and this was when I realized that I needed to start stitching pieces that would take me longer um, and so I will show you what I went to and boy did it ever take me long here is the first full coverage piece I worked on the only one I've ever finished And this is based on the artwork of John William Waterhouse, and this is Psyche Entering Cupid's Garden. Now he is my favorite painter. He's British. He's part of the Pre-Raphaelite movement, 
and he used the same model throughout many or most of his paintings actually. And I decided to do a full coverage. The pattern is actually from Golden Kite. It's stitched on 32 count linen, two over two. And this is, I believe, the uh, blended threads version of the pattern. And I decided to do a full coverage piece. I mean, one, because I love Waterhouse. I love this painting, but I felt like I needed a challenge. I was finishing my Mirabilia's very quickly and they're very expensive to frame and I couldn't bear to just, you know, not see them framed, to roll them up and put them away or to try to do it myself. So I decided to tackle this and it took me six and a half years. So I stitched nothing but this. It was the first time actually that I used a scroll frame and a, a stand. I used a lap stand for this. And this was also the first time that I really was kind of hands-free. I didn't have to hold a Q-snap. So I started stitching with both hands and I got really, really fast. But even so, this took, it took six and a half years. And in that time, I'm not quite sure why, but I did not, not only did I not stitch anything, but I didn't look at other patterns. I didn't buy anything else. I didn't buy fabric. I don't have a good cross stitch shop anywhere near me. So that probably played a, a little bit of a role. Um, and I don't have any regrets. I mean, this is beautiful. And it taught me a lot about painting as well. Now I did end up several months and this is why I'm very careful about the designs I choose. So this top corner was several months worth and all I stitched with was green, gray, and brown for months and months and months. And then when I got down to the face and the head and the dress and the flowers, you know, it was worth it. But when I selected this painting or this cross stitch pattern to do, I was really, really, really careful about picking one that had um, nice colors, bright colors and everything. And I finished this a few months before my daughter was born. I had it professionally framed and it was worth it. It hangs on my wall. And it's the favorite piece that I've ever finished. So here is the, actually the last piece that I finished before I started floss tube. This is Lavender and Lace Celtic Summer, of course. And um, I've got the sticky notes at the bottom because it has some of my daughter's information on it. Um, but it's funny, I started this, well, first of all, I was very lucky that um, I, these are the specialty threads from her original design. And I picked this up when it first came out and I, I kept it for years. And the floss maybe was a little old, but it seemed in really good condition, so I used it anyway. And I started stitching this when I was pregnant. And then as soon as I had my daughter, I uh, was not getting a lot of sleep. And so I stopped stitching until she was like 20 months old. And then I picked this up and I finished it very, very quickly. Um, and this was the first piece that I did where I did the beading and the cranic and the regular stitching all at the same time to try to go top down because I'll show you a close-up. The top is lots and lots of beads and I just didn't want to go back and do that. So I was able to, um, I was able to get that done and I really, really love it. So anyway, this is my, the last piece that I've actually finished and I finished this in May.